Many nonprofit board members are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. To learn the real role of board members, watch now. Board members of a nonprofit organization play a vital role in success or failure of that organization. But for a wide variety of reasons, board members are enlisted to serve, but given little training on their actual role and responsibility and lack understanding about their responsibilities. A nonprofit board member is a legitimate owner of an organization and plays a key role in setting the course and direction of its future. Board members have four main responsibilities. Responsibility one, provide oversight. The critical role of a board member is to provide accountability for the leadership and its decisions that are made. The board sets overall policy and establishes the governance of the organization. The staff actually do the governing, but the board establishes the policies and procedures related to that governance. The board selects and appoints the executive director, CEO, or senior leadership. The board member plays a key role in supporting the senior leader and assesses the performance of that leader. This is not easy because the board member must find balance between being a sounding board for the leader, but also is the one who is responsible if the leader does not accomplish the, and the established goals and objectives, performed assigned duties, and must release the leader if they're not performing up to those standards. I pray that none of you board members ever have to release your executive director or senior leader because it will be one of the most difficult tasks that you ever perform, but sometimes it's the best thing for the organization. But before that would ever happen, there are great opportunities to come alongside the leader and provide guidance and wise counsel to help them grow from every decision and success or mistake that they make. The executive director, CEO, or senior leader needs someone to come alongside them to share the ups and the downs of the organization, to weather the storms, and to give honest feedback. That's where the board member comes in, standing in the gap. The board member needs to make themselves available when needed by the leader, but also must find balance between being a financial investor listening ear, but also a boss. The executive director position can be a lonely position because difficult decisions must be made for the good of the organization. Tough decisions involving overall direction and staffing. The leader normally has few people who understand their challenges. A board member must do their best to fully comprehend all the tasks and responsibilities related to the job of an executive director in order to be empathetic and understanding when their input is sought, but also to evaluate and give input on performance. Sometimes the executive director needs answers to questions or solutions to problems from a board member who has had business or life experience. Wisdom may be one of the reasons a board member is asked to join a board, but many times the executive director just needs someone to listen. As someone who has provided counsel to boards, served on boards, and even chaired boards, one of the biggest complaints I've heard from senior leadership is, my board members never respond to my communication. An executive director once said to me with tears in her eyes, my board never answers my emails. I just wish they could respond even with a simple, got it, or I agree. That would be a great comfort to me, but I get nothing. No response can be discouraging to a leader. Responsibility number two, establish and maintain the mission of the organization. The board must help create, establish, or update the mission statement of the organization and work to keep the organization on track or on mission. Staff can get so sidetracked putting out fires that they never focus on accomplishing the things that the organization was created to do. The mission statement is sort of a plumb line for an organization. It's the role of the board member to keep asking the tough questions related to what's being accomplished and how they relate to the mission of the organization. It's important to continue to clarify the mission to ensure that it's clear to the other board members, to the staff, and to the donors or constituency. 
I can't tell you how often I've asked for the mission statement from all parties individually and gotten different mission statements from each. All parties involved in the organization must be on the same page and moving in the same direction for the organization to truly succeed. There should be no ambiguity with where the organization is headed. In addition to clarifying the mission, the board must set policy for the organization. The staff enforces the policy, but the board approves and establishes policies related to programs and finances. Unbelievably, most boards don't understand that they have a fiduciary responsibility clearly established in the Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws and can be held accountable for, to governing agencies for their lack of leadership. Lack of leadership includes the hiring of staff and oversight of finances. Ignorance is no excuse when it comes to understanding these very important responsibilities. The board can be held responsible for mismanagement of funds by a staff member because the board is responsible for oversight. That's huge. This includes not only misspending of contributions, but also the inability to raise funds or contributions. It's also the role of the board member to establish goals for programs, fundraising, and various other areas of focus. Some may fear that this gives board responsibility to micromanage the staff, but it's not the role of the board to accomplish the goals, just to play a role in establishing those goals and empowering leadership to achieve the goals. The board doesn't have to create the goals. That can, that can be done by senior management who can bring the goals to the board for their approval. It can be up to senior management as to how the goals are accomplished, but ultimately the establishment and accomplishment of those goals rests squarely on the shoulders of the board. If staff is not doing their job accomplishing the goals, board members must find ways to resolve those issues. Board members also are responsible for approving long-range plans, strategies, and goals. Three, five, ten-year plans are often established during strategic planning times that occur annually or every other year. Once again, the staff can recommend goals for the organization, but they must be approved by the board. Responsibility number three, relationships. The board must take the lead in establishing positive relationships, both internally and externally. When referring to internal relationship, that means with staff and volunteers, while external relationships means the general public. A board member must understand the work of the organization well enough to be able to promote and to defend it. The need to understand their role as a spokesperson for the organization means communicating the mission, vision, and values, market and sell the organization when the opportunity exists, and even defend the organization when it's needed to donors, the media, or government or other oversight agencies. A board member should understand their role in fundraising and be willing to thank donors, promote the organization with current and potential donors, alone or with the executive director or senior leader, or cultivate relationships with both. Responsibility number four, a strong grasp of the financial position. A board member should know their fiduciary responsibility and take responsibility for financial well-being of the organization by assuring the integrity of financial management. A board member should not only lead out in spending of the funds, but lead out in raising funds necessary to fulfill the mission of the organization and establish goals and objectives. A board member should not only meet with donors to help raise funds for the organization, as mentioned before, in the relationship responsibility, but they should determine standards such as the percentage of fundraising and administrative costs and expenses. As you can see, a board member is more than just a caretaker or active observer of the organization and its operations. They can't sit on the sidelines while the staff play on the field, and they also can't be a rubber stamp for decisions made by the leadership. They must take responsibility for the workings of the organization and be active participants in the decision making. I'll talk more about the specific role in fundraising in future videos. 
The responsibilities associated with being a board member of a nonprofit organization should be taken very seriously and should not be ventured into easily. Too many members take lightly an offer to serve and the real responsibilities should be accepted now. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the next release. Also, post a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there were topics you'd like to address. For videos similar to this, check out the video or playlist listed above. To watch other videos related to nonprofit fundraising, go to our channel, Development Effectiveness Strategies. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.